Hi, this is Mike Fauché, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure TailScale as a Docker container on your Ugreen NAS. You'll learn how to use it to securely access your entire local network from anywhere. And as a bonus, we'll cover all the basics of TailScale in the event you're not familiar with it. So if you're ready to learn more about TailScale, then stick around for the rest of this video. And as always, if you find this tutorial useful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell as it really does help promote the channel. In my opinion, TailScale is the single most useful service I've come across in years. I've been recommending it for a long time and rely on it on a daily basis to access my home automation, storage, remote access to other devices on my network. In principle, I completely avoid the built-in cloud connectors, such as the ones on my NAS, smart home, and other devices. Before we start with how to set it up, I want to cover some of the basic features of TailScale. If you're already familiar with TailScale and how it works, and have used all of its features, then skip ahead to the setup and configuration chapter, where I'll walk you through how to set this up on your Ugreen NAS as a Docker container. So how does TailScale actually work? TailScale uses a VPN technology that functions as a peer-to-peer -peer mesh network, which effectively connects all your devices together regardless of where they are but still allows for normal internet traffic to flow directly to the internet. For example, let's say that you install TailScale on your laptop in NAS. When your laptop requests a search from Google or you need to access your bank's website, TailScale doesn't do anything, and it lets your data go directly to the internet. However, if you request something from the NAS that also has TailScale on it, that traffic will be sent to the NAS and will allow you to access that device just as if you were at home on your home network without opening any ports or any configuration. This is great, however, with this setup, your laptop can only see the NAS and not the rest of your network, such as your printer, smart home devices, or anything else that's connected to it. That brings us to the second and arguably the most important feature of TailScale, and that's the subnet router. It may sound complicated, but it's actually a simple feature that gets added to your Docker container, Windows machine, or other supported devices. Effectively, a subrouter opens up the entire IP range of your home network, and the enabled device becomes a secured gateway to the entire home network or multiple networks. Suddenly, your laptop not only sees your NAS, but it can see everything. Printers, smart home devices, such as Home Assistant, security cameras, computers, or access to any storage device, even ones that don't support TailScale. We'll go through how to enable this feature when we actually configure the Docker container later in the video. Finally, there's the exit node. This is great when you're traveling out of the country or even out of state. Though TailScale can work from virtually anywhere in the world, it doesn't mask your location. For example, if you live in the U.S. and travel to France, you can easily access your devices just as if you were at home. However, let's say that you want to start a streaming service or play some content because you're in France, U.S. services will be blocked due to region blocks. Enter exit node. For example, if you configure your NAS as an exit node, all traffic from your client will be routed through that node, making it look like you're still in the U.S. or the country of origin, allowing most of the streaming services and other sites with region blocks to now work. The only downside is a performance hit, as all the traffic travels from your location directly to the exit node before reaching its destination. With this feature, you can easily enable and disable directly from your client, and it affects only the specific device that you're on. So now that we have a slightly better understanding of the features of TailScale, it's time to walk through how to set this up in a Docker container on your Ugreen NAS. Though I'm using a Ugreen NAS, most of this will probably apply to other manufacturers with a small amount of modifications. I'll be posting the script in the video description that I used to create my Docker video to simplify your installation. These instructions assume that you have the Docker application installed, so if you don't, take a minute to go to the App Center and install Docker on your NAS. Many Docker containers can be created directly from the container section of the Docker app. However, because of the extra commands, we'll actually need to create it from the project screen so that we can add to the custom parameters that we need. To start with, Go to the project section of Docker and hit create. 
Give the project a name such as tailscale, or in my case, tailscale underscore test, as I already have a tailscale docker running. Click on the folder icon in the storage path and just close the box. It will automatically populate the correct folder based on the name that you chose. Now copy and paste the script that I included in the video comment section as it will be our starting point. We'll need to make some modifications to this standard script for your particular network. You can leave everything alone as you don't need to make any changes all the way to line 15 of this script. You can delete line 7 if you don't want the container to start automatically when the NAS or application is restarted, but I would suggest leaving this alone. If you want to know more about what these individual commands mean, there's a ton of information and details out there of what each does, but that's out of the scope of this video. Line 16 is where we're going to post an authentication key that we're going to get from the Tailscale admin console. We'll come back to this a little bit later. No changes are needed on line 17. But line 18 is very important as this is where we enter the specifics of your network. Remember earlier in the video we talked about the subnet router. The TS underscore route setting is where you set your network subnet that you're currently using on your home LAN. This is how you'll be able to access all of your devices, so make sure that you type this in correctly. You'll need to put in your network range here. So for example, if your IP range of the devices on your network are 192.168.1.xxx, you'll enter the entire subrange of 192.168.1.0/24 as this covers the entire range of IP addresses on your network. In my case, I have a 192.168.0.xxx IP addresses so I'm going to be using 192.168.0.0/24 as that's the range of my network. I did want to point out that you can add a comma with no spaces and add a second or another range if you need to. This is useful if you're using a VLAN such as for your security cameras or any other function that are on a separate VLAN and you want to be able to advertise that IP range so that you can painlessly gain access to them when you're away from home. In my current setting, I have an IP security camera on a VLAN, so I added 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Remember that all entries have to end with a 0 slash 24, and multiple ranges have to be separated with a comma. Do not add any spaces between the ranges if you have more than one. The last change you'll make is on line 19, which is the host name that'll appear in the Tailscale console. In other words, you want to name your device. For this video, I'm going to call it 4800 test. Leave the rest of the script alone. Now we have one last step to do, and that's to get an authentication key and paste it into line 16. To get a key, log into your Tailscale account, and if you don't have one, go ahead and create one now. Once you're in the admin console, select settings from the top menu, and on the lower left, you see the word keys. Select keys, and under the auth keys, select the generate auth key button. On the next screen, give it a description and enable reusable. A couple words about the auth keys. The expiration date here is the amount of time that you have to use the key before it expires. This has nothing to do with the expiring key function that we'll set later in Tailscale, which is tied to WireGuard. It's not important how much time you set here, but for best security, I would recommend something around 3 to 10 days so that it will expire. As long as you create the container before then, you should be good to go. The key expiring will not affect the functionality of your tail scale container once the container has been created. Select generate and it will generate an authentication key for you. Click on copy and select done. You may want to paste this key in a notepad for a bit while you make sure that everything's working on your container in the event that you need to recreate it a couple of times as you won't be able to get a copy of that key again and you'll have to generate a new one. Now go back to the project tab for Docker that we were creating, and we're going to modify line 16. Delete everything to the right of the equal sign and paste in the new authentication key that you created. Make sure there's no additional spaces after the equal sign to avoid any issues. If you did everything right, click on deploy, and you should now have a working tail scale Docker, complete with subnet router. But we're not quite done yet. Let's jump back to the Tailscale admin console and scroll down to the new Tailscale device, which I called 4800 test, 
or whatever name that you used, and we can verify that there's a green dot indicating that it's connected. Go over to the triple dots on the right and click on them and select Disable Key Expiry. We want to disable the key expiration so that the authentication of your Docker does not expire as we don't want this condition when using a subnet router. Before we enable the last settings, let's look at some things in my control panel to just help you understand. First, you'll notice that there are several devices that have labels that say subnet, exit nodes, or both. Though not necessary, it's perfectly fine if you want to use multiple devices as exit nodes as they are selected at the client level. However, subnet routers may be set up on multiple devices, but only one needs to be active to avoid network routing problems. The exception to that is if you create one device for one range of IPs and another device for a different range of IPs. My recommendation is you put everything on one device and avoid any routing issues. You can switch devices at any time, but remember if you switch subnet routers to a different device, you need to go back and disable the other devices. For this Docker container on our Ugreen NAS, we're going to go ahead and enable it so that we can test it and see how this works. We need to verify that the other subnet routers have been disabled, and you can quickly detect if they're working or if they're enabled or not by the exclamation point next to the label. One last thing. You won't see the exit node option on this Docker container because as of this video, I was not able to get the exit node function on the Ugreen Docker. I'm sure there's a solution and I'll eventually find it. But fortunately, as this isn't used very much unless you're traveling, it doesn't take away from the usefulness of this configuration. And as soon as I get it working correctly, I'll add the solution into the video description. So now that everything's installed and running, let's test this thing out to see if it works the way that we want. First, let's validate my location from my system to verify that I can access my devices. I'm going to go to whatsmyip.com so that I can show that I'm running from my home provider. And as you can see, I have a WAN address that starts with 104. This will make sense later in the video. I masked the rest of the address for privacy reasons. As you would expect, locally using a browser, I'm able to access my Unraid server, my QNAP, and my Ugreen admin screens as well as my home assistant from within my home network. I picked these devices because with the exception of the Ugreen NAS, which is running in our container, none of these devices were accessing have tail scale installed on them. So when we test them later using the subnet router, we'll be able to actually verify how the subnet router works. Moving to a different location, I'm gonna go back to whatsmyip.com and see that I'm now in a different location. I temporarily disabled the TailScale app so that we could verify that I'm not able to access any of the devices. Using the guest Wi-Fi at my work with the app disabled, I'm not able to access any of the devices that we accessed earlier when I was on my local LAN, which is what you would expect and certainly what you want. Now launching the TailScale app on my laptop, let's verify that I'm still at the same location and repeating the same test that we did before but with the app loaded, now I can easily access my Unraid server, my QNAP, and my Ugreen admin screens, as well as my home assistant, which is exactly as if I were sitting at home at my home network. But in reality, I'm miles away in another location. As I mentioned before, when we're configuring TailScale, it's using a subnet feature, and as we saw, all local traffic, such as when I accessed my devices, is being routed via the subnet router to your network and all the rest of the traffic is being directly routed to the internet as indicated by the WAN IP. This means you can access any device the way you would normally access it from anywhere. To further demonstrate how TailScale subnet functions, I'm going to open the file manager from my work location and using the same IP addresses that I would be using from home, you can see that I can access any device or files from that network. One last point that I think is really important, and that's the power that it brings to mobile devices. Installing the TailScale mobile app and running it on your phone allows your mobile devices to connect to any of your home devices without the use of other proprietary providers, such as the ones on your NAS, or any complicated setups such as Nextcloud, just to name a couple. For example, if I take a quick look at the Home Assistant mobile app and look at the configuration of the mobile app, you'll see that it's not using any type of cryptic address or service, but rather the same local IP address I used earlier because all traffic is treated as local traffic to my network even when I'm away. 
Home Assistant actually thinks I'm still at home and it's connecting to the device via Tailscale. The same goes for my QNAP NAS application and my Ugreen Mobile. This is really handy when you're trying to do things like syncing photos. Every device is treated exactly the same as if you were at home. This will work no matter what you're doing without any configuration, port forwarding, and all traffic is encrypted from the endpoint to the endpoint. In other words, from your client to the subrouter. As Tailscale is built on top of WireGuard, having a subnet router configured is a lifesaver and brings simplicity and extra security as you don't have to configure multiple connectors or services to access your devices. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Tailscale solves so many problems for me that I really can't live without it. It has become the only tech I rely on to access my devices on my local LAN when I'm away. It's a secure, fast, and flexible solution that works perfectly even if you have a dynamic WAN IP address from your provider without any type of port configuration. It works on most devices, but using it on the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus, I can take advantage of a device that's on 24-7 that has more than enough performance. If you're not yet running Tailscale on some type of device, you're really missing out, and I would recommend you give it a try and use it instead of any other cloud connector that you may have running on your network. If you're looking to better utilize your DXP4800 Plus or any NAS device for that matter, then give Tailscale in a Docker container a try. Well, that's about it for today's video, and if you found it useful, please subscribe and give it a like. Let me know in the comments if you're using Tailscale now or if you plan to set it up in the near future and what you're going to set it up on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.